Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about mouths, uh, mouths, tongues, and teeth. And specifically, we're going to use this Gore Grunta here to do that. Because um, he has a nice big open mouth. He has some nice big teeth. Let's get our zoom exactly right there. There we go. And uh, what we're going to do, we've got this guy's mouth up here too, which we might try to hit, but this, his mouth is way hidden. So, But this mouth is real big and has some real big teeth. Er. So we're going to talk about how we do the coloration on mouths tongues, and teeth, and how we make it all work together and stay separate at the same time. Uh, all right, so let's set him to the side and talk about the paints we're going to be using today. So uh, I have three sort of shades here. Hull Red, which is sort of my shadow color for a lot of these models. Uh, War Colors Violet 3, which is just a uh, more or less a true purple. It's slightly blue. And then uh, Orcish Dermis. Uh, from Scale 75, Fantasy, and Games Line. If you don't have these three exact paints, it doesn't matter. You need a dark red, a mid-purple, and some kind of pink. There you go. Uh, when it comes to the teeth, um, we're going to talk about some whole red uh, again, some ochre one uh, from War Colors, and some white sands from Scale 75. Uh, we'll probably also use a little bit of black in here just slightly when we want to talk about our deepest shadows, but, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about that. Basically, any old black will do. So, I've got all these colors on my palette already, and what we're going to start out doing is we want to get some deep shadows way down in here. Now, depending on how your mouth is depends on how you need to push these shadows around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of the pink and a little of the purple, and I mix those together because those both form a nice base for us. And what I'm then going to do is pull in some whole red over on my palette. I want it to be nice and dark, and actually here I might just put the tip of the brush in the black and pull a little bit of that in too, just to kind of darken it up a little. Because we're going for the deepest recesses. And when I paint mouse, what I end up with, by the way, here is something like that. Okay? Like a nice, deep red purple and when we're dealing with mouths what we want to do is we want to work in out um, this guy has a really exceptional mouth but i'm literally just going to kind of shove my brush in here and pull paint forward just get it really deep all the way back in there if you can get to the top of the mouth you do the same thing but you can see how it's down in there just shoving it around just really getting it pushed in, making sure I come all the way up to the front and get the gums here under the tongue, right? So down in this area. I'll do the same up on his mouth, though it's going to be very hard to get that on camera. I apologize. Just the angle of these guys is nearly impossible. To, But there you go. So now we got a nice dark spot in there. Now, depending on how dark that is, if it's still kind of wet, we can go in and grab a little more of our black color, pull it together with a little more of our whole red, so we've got just a black whole red combo, which looks a bit like that, just a dark shade. And what we're going to do is way back under the tongue here, we're going to just push a little of that around to really, really shadow the back parts. And we're just kind of wet blending this. And that's the goal here, right? I'm not waiting for this paint to dry. I'm just pushing it back in there nice and wet. Okay. Next up, I'm going to take that same color that I drug forward, the darker color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to ring the edge of the teeth. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to create... The very bottom, I'm actually doing this more to touch the tips of the gum than the teeth. I'll end up covering most of this over later, but I want this nice hard line between what will eventually be the teeth that looks like gum color. So you can see how we get that shadow there. Okay, so we'll do it to the other side. So this is our sort of pink, purple, whole red, black mixture. We're just literally tracing the bottom of the teeth along. 
And the key is this is going to hit the top of the gums here as well. And that's intentional. We want to leave. So there'll always be a little of that left behind. And we get the front. These guys have giant mouths. It's ridiculous. Okay. Do the same on our little orky buddy here. Up top. Sorry, his chop is probably in the way there. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit harder to hit him, like I said, the top part. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to start lightening the color and pulling it forward on the tongue. So we're going to focus on the tongue for a moment. This is where we get into our pink and purple mix. So we take equal parts of that pink and purple, and we just blend it out with the color we did before, and we're just going to quickly wet blend that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with just the tongue itself. Let's see if I can get some more light in here from above. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to kind of pull it down. I'll kind of void and then blend the edge there into the previous tongue. And then I want to get a little bit lighter version of it. And pull it out and up to the top here. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. And then I want to take just a little of the sort of pure pink, just a very small amount of that regular dermis. And on the very tip of the tongue, we just pull it out. And what we get is a nice smooth blend that goes from real dark out to a nice light color for the tip of the tongue color. Okay. Now, if you want to get if that's, you know, if you ever, if you turn it and it goes a little too pink on you, you can always just take your purple, work it into a glaze, and run it over the top. Because ideally, you want this to be a little crimson. I have these guys a little more cartoony with their tongues because they're kind of a cartoony model. Um, you may want to up the purple content or deepen some shadows with a little additional whole red. These guys have a little ridge in their tongue. Right there, you can see the little ridge. So, very quickly... I'm going to grab some of my shadow hull red color, and we're just going to trace that down very carefully. Okay. Just to reinforce that shadow there. Little touch. Okay. Now, we've got along the, and that's basically it, you know, you just need to get it sh the, the mouth deep shadows. Like, the key is to push that deep whole red, that deep black, way back in mouths. And that's true if you've got tiny mouths like the orc, or big mouths like this monster. The bigger the mouth, the more you want to vary the color inside. So if you've got a big dragon head that's like a wide open maw just going like, ah, then you really want to push those blends out there and create some of that variation. The model, when it sits like this, is going to do a lot of the work for you. Because it will have very, it'll, the mouth will cast deep shadows. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the ochre. And the reason, it's easy when you're doing teeth to just sort of think, oh, okay, now it's time to get out the brown and get out the white and go to town, just like I have a hundred times before. But the problem is, is that then that leaves that part very disparate from the rest of the model. It can seem like the teeth are just floating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some of that ochre, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it under control on our brush. I'll just do one side of these teeth so you don't have to watch ever, help me do all these teeth. And I'm just gonna pull it down, but I'm not gonna go all the way up to the top. One tooth at a time, just pulling it always in the direction of where I want the paint to gather, so toward the top of the tooth. Okay. All right. Okay. So you can see how that looks. Now, I'm not going to ever mix the ochre and the other color. Because the problem is, if I put ochre into this base gum color, I'm just going to get a bright pink. And I don't want that. What I want is a transition that maintains the darkness. So instead, I'm going to work my original dark color, which is just whole red plus a little black, into a thin glaze. 
and then I'm going to pull it up. And that's how I'm going to smooth out the blend between that. Now, depending on the level you're trying to take your model to, determines the number of times you need to perform this glaze. If you're just trying to get something that looks nice, but you want it on the table, probably one glaze is enough. If you are trying to compete with this, you're going to need to do this many times to get this blend exactly correct. And by the way, when I do this, I'm going to repeat, use that red as my shadow color up on these horns as well, just to make sure I get everything harmonious. Next up, I'm going to take some of that white sands, water it down a little bit, which is a slightly brighter white. And I'm going to go ahead and in a much smaller way, Again, pulling up, always moving in the direction. If there's an edge to the teeth, like on some of these, I might try to hit the edge with the side of my brush to give it a kind of edge highlight. And just very quick little touches. And I'm going to go over them a couple times, again, focusing the paint around the top of the teeth. All right, so now we get a little more intensity. Then what do we do? Hey, guess what? We're going back to that whole red glaze. Get a nice another thin batch of that on there. Test it out, looks good. And we're just gonna run that thin glaze up there again. And down. We're just creating little filters, smoothing out that transition, right? Okay, now where we've got just the, the that, I'm going to just grab some pure white. I always keep a little pure white on my, on my palette. This is just any old regular white. And then what I'm going to do is on the sort of very tip of each tooth, I'm just going to touch that pure white. I might not even hit every tooth if it's a particularly short tooth. So then what we get is this nice maximum transition that still very much aligns to the gum color, right? So you can see the gum color is that nice, darker color. Stand The gums stand out against the tongue, stands out against the teeth, but everything is still moving in harmony. By the way, if you get too much red, you can always take your, like your ochre, whatever your mid-tone is, I'm using ochre one, you could use, this could be replaced, by the way, with some kind of bone color. If you don't have this exact color, that's fine. Some kind of, of nice bone color will work. But I can always work that to a glaze, and I can smooth that down too. So if I want to push a little more white into the teeth, I can always do that. Again, just nice, thin glazes. Now you can see how much more white the teeth are. And if I wanted to, guess what? Here we go. Where are we going? Back to the glaze again for the whole red. It's a back and forth thing. That's all it is. It's just a back and forth thing. And then the edges, I just very lightly, from kind of the midpoint down. And there we go. And each time I'm doing that, I'm deepening that shadow at the edge of the tooth, right? And what that does is it creates a nice barrier between the tooth and the actual mouth. So that way they really pop and stand out. And that's basically it. So to very quickly review all the keys, way down deep in the mouth, you just want to jam some dark paint in there. Don't use your nice brushes because you will screw them up. Um, I like a good mix of a sort of pink. I like Orcus Dermis because I think it's just a wonderful pink color for sort of internal organs. It just has the look, doesn't it? Of like a stomach or a throat or something. It's kind of got that color. A nice purple to mix with it and a nice deep crimson red. Um, you can then mix in some black for your very deepest shadows, and then you just pull out to that almost pure pink out of the tongue. If you don't like pure pink, if you don't want to go as cartoony, then pull out to, uh, you can, you can still keep the whole red in it the whole time, but just slowly brighten it up with a whole red pink mix. And that'll retain the sort of crimson color that you pull forward. Okay. So it's about kind of what you're trying to achieve. You use your deepest, darkest shadow of just your deep crimson or whole red plus black to rim the edge of your teeth. 
and then you just sort of slowly in three different layers. In this case, I used ochre, white sands, and pure white to very quickly build up the intensity of the teeth, glazing back a, a whole red every time to make sure the transition always remains smooth. So there you go. That's how that looks. Uh, I hope you found that interesting and helpful, and that'll help you get some mouths and teeth done in the future. Uh, give it a like if you like this. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see in future videos, feel free to, of course, drop a suggestion down below. Always appreciate that. Give this a share with anyone if you think it might help their personal hobby journey. That is always deeply appreciated. But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.